so hello people welcome back to my channel this is ranji raj and uh, hope you enjoyed the previous uh, session for python programming for the beginners so in the previous session we discussed uh, how we write a code in python but it was just a one liner for just the print function and i also mentioned like you need not use any kind of special imports or so on uh, but uh, if you know python is the uh, most widely used programming language throughout the world because it has a very rich uh, libraries mathematical libraries as well as statistical libraries for doing the machine learning activities and so for to use in uh, order to use certain of the methods uh, predefined methods from the uh, mathematical functionalities you need to do some certain kind of imports but that import is uh, just you have to write only once you need not do it again and again so uh, today's session will be a bit longer than the previous one because we'll be uh, covering some of the conventions some of the do's and don'ts uh, while doing the python programming and also uh, if you are familiar with the previous uh, programming languages other than python like c c++ or java then there are some things uh, which is uh, somewhat different in python or it is done in a different way rather in a different way uh, as opposed to other programming languages so with no further ado let's get started so this is our uh, google collab uh, jupyter notebook or ipython notebook file so i have uh, set the ram and the disk so make sure uh, this is connected to the uh, back computing engine by the google so uh, let's rename this file so i will make this file available after uh, doing the session on my github so make sure you check there so you get all these codes and uh, this notebooks there for free so you can access my github code i'll just put the link in the description so you just make sure that you check there okay so what we did previously was uh, we just uh, defined the print function or we got to know like how we can use the print function so it was like this yeah it was like this so what we did is we printed like this or we learnt like this now uh, if you want like to add certain kind of uh, statements which should not be run during the execution so those are basically the comment lines which you follow so this will not run so you get the same output as the previous but just the print statement this will not run because it's a comment that is a single liner single line comment for one particular uh, line uh, you write this uh, by representing this hash it's called as an octotrophy so uh, you make use of this hash symbol in order to uh, disable the printing of this particular line so uh, now what if i have uh, like say what i do is i have these many so but uh, i don't want to print all the like this like this like this i just want to print the very first line so what should i do so shall i uh, type this hashtag at and or the beginning of each of these lines so that will be very difficult or it would be a tedious activity if you have 100 lines of code so there should be some roundabout to this so for that you mainly use a documentation uh, like you have multi line in java so that is a documentation comment so what you basically do is uh, you just type like this uh, three quotes triple quotes like this and you just run this so but the problem with this is uh, in the console it will show you like uh, this will be print like this like this whatever is there uh, below this print so this obviously printed with no issue but 
whatever line is there below this uh, it's showing some uh, this trace back of what is there at the beneath of this so but you, uh, if you do on the python idle uh, this error won't come but this is uh, since we are using this collab that's why it's uh, showing like this but this is one alternative for uh, the commenting so this uh, is the interpretability part so any code that you write must be documented well so that it can be easily understood so for that i discuss this that is the commenting in python next uh, what we have is called as so i will just put a code that is the identifier so you all might know or some of you know about what is or what are identifiers basically so uh, identifiers are uh, basically they are used to identify a unit in a program identify a unit in a program what does this mean uh, so uh, basically you have different kinds of variables types label subroutines functions and packages which are there in each of the programming languages so in order to uniquely identify that or in order to uh, give them a memory reserve or location into the storage or into the ram so for that you mainly use the identifier that this particular uh, term or this particular variable is assigned to this memory location so accordingly we have something called as variables so what are variables variables are basically reserved memory locations so it is basically used to store the values it is just as simple as that so now we will uh, see some kind of uh, coding so uh, if you are already familiar with the programming languages like c c++ or java you know that those languages are strongly typed languages that means uh, you have to do the function declaration now what do you mean by function declaration like say uh, if you want to create a variable that is a for instance like this a just simple a uh, but you don't know what data type it has got data type means like uh, what should be how much memory location it should be assigned to this uh, variable so let's say for example i write int a so this is basically called as the uh, variable declaration so just you have declared this uh, memory space or the reserve in the main memory and if you want to assign a value to this what do you write it as value as 10 so this became variable declaration as well as variable definition means in my memory there is a variable called as a and it occupies a value 10 so but this was the case or this was the story uh, in case of c c++ or java because they are strongly typed because you need to strongly type these kind of data types into that but when it comes to python python is dynamically typed language so you need not type this int a is equal to 10 you need not do that so what you will do instead just write a and you write 10 like this then what I do is I just write a so you get the value 10 here so this is the uh, most useful thing uh, when you do the python programming so uh, you don't have any variable declaration here so that is the uh, uh, first and foremost thing uh, you have to remember in python that it is a dynamically typed language so now uh, similarly you have different data types uh, like uh, you have int and float double 
then boolean etc are there in java c++ and c uh, but in python you don't have uh, these many but you have very few data types that will be coming across uh, in few minutes so now what we have is we have seen like uh, how we can uh, declare a variable as well as assign value to it in the memory reserve now uh, what we do is for each variable what we can do is we can check the type means you have just written that a is equal to 10 but internally what is the data type of a how you will cross check so for that you have some method called as type method so when you run this it shows that it is an integer or if i have say if i have a so this was the real part that is with uh, no floating point now if i have something like this so this is now a floating point that is a decimal value it has a real part as well as a decimal part so if i type like this it will be float or if i have something like say like this it will be string so as you can see how it changed the type so this is the magic of python or the beauty of python uh, in fact like you need not just write the uh, data type definition before any variable so you can easily use this throughout the code so that's why it is the most popular programming languages uh, for machine learning so these are the basics that we are discussing about uh, python next uh, what we can do is like we have uh, now we have discussed about the memory reserves like uh, it obtains certain memory reserve in the uh, ram and it has got certain address so what will be the address of a if i want to uh, check that how do i do it so for that we have basically either identifier or id so similarly each of us have uh, certain id numbers like matriculation number or roll number similarly variables in python in the memory reserve have identifiers so if i type like this and if i run this so you get this number that is 10914784 so this is the address of that particular variable in the memory so uh, you know like how now how you can identify the type as well as how you can identify the uh, memory value for each variable so as and on you create new variables uh, you can uh, do this kind of activities and check like where it is actually referencing now what we do is uh, we create another variable that is b and just make sure that whenever you type any uh, variables or operators equal to is an operator b and a both are variables so just make sure that there is enough space that is a one space bar in between so that it becomes the code more interpretable otherwise it will be very congested it will not look good so uh, by this uh, what i meant to say is like if you have uh, something like this that is b is equal to a so this particular expression or this particular statement is called as an assignment so whatever value of a will be assigned to b so we'll just check that and we'll just control enter we get the value as 10 but my question is is the same memory reference is assigned to b as well like uh, the value should be same basically so how do we check that we type the id of b whether is it referring to the same memory location as to a yes it is exactly same so you have one particular block where a was originally kept now b is also referring to that same memory location so these are basic things uh, which you need to uh, know whenever you do the uh, python programming and also in tensorflow like uh, 
uh, when we build different kinds of neural networks and layers how this memory structures are taking place or they are obtaining space in the memory so this is just a quick revision of different types of methods that are predefined or that are available in python next what we go for is like uh, if you uh, know that is certain uh, programming languages c c++ java you have certain keywords so there are some 30 40 keywords in each of this and uh, it becomes very difficult like uh, to remember which all are the keywords or which were are the keywords in these programming languages but uh, python's beauty is that if you write a code it will fetch you all the available keywords which are there in this particular version so since we are using this python 3 version so you can just simply write a code and i'll just write that so the keyword is import that is a keyword which is there already in python i write keyword import keyword and in the print function what i do is keywords dot kw list so kw list is uh, another kind of uh, variable which is used to print the uh, keywords or all the built-in keywords which are predefined which are there in python so if i run this you get to see all the available keywords that is false none true and as assert break class continue and many other so some of these keywords are uh, or may be familiar to you since uh, if you know the other programming languages uh, but uh, just to make sure like uh, you don't have any do while like we used to have in C and Java also in C++ and there is no switch statement for uh, doing certain kind of uh, programmings like uh, you mainly use in like for calculation or for calculators a programming calculator if you do you mainly use a switch statement so in Python you don't have a switch statement neither you have a double uh, do while statement so with that uh, now what we come into like we have the data types what all are the predefined built-in data types that are available in python 3 so for that i have basically this so this is the list of uh, built-in data types that are available in python 3 so you have the int data type for storing the integer type you have float for double representation then you have something called as complex so complex if you remember like uh, when you calculate the square root of a quadratic equation basically you have the real part as well as the imaginary part so that was something like uh, if i want to write it so there in programming languages uh, or in mathematics in your high school you learned like you have something like 3i so whether the former part that is this part is a real part and whatever is there here this is the imaginary part so but in python what you can do is uh, you can assign this to a variable and instead of i it is characterized by j so any complex number in python is represented by like this and if you just print like this it will be 2 plus 3j and if i want to know the type of s it is complex so you have this kind of extensions uh, to the mathematical functions and mathematical libraries which are extensively provided by python that is why it is mostly or widely used in uh, machine learning so this is the reason why python is a very rich programming language uh, for doing many kind of different activities in mathematics okay now what we have is uh, we just go back here we have uh, the boolean data type like true false uh, like a flag variable which we used to uh, use in c or java 
and then there are some sequence types which are available so sequence types like they store only just one values like you have string you have bytes then you have byte array range list and tuple so it stores uh, the values in a sequence so one after the other so these are specially categorized as sequence types then you have something called as set so uh, in where set you can have values uh, which are not duplicate so you cannot repeat values in set then you have something called as frozen set an extensive version of set then you have dictionary where you have like key value pair like you normally use your dictionary and then you have none type so this none type refers to if you uh, initialize a variable and if you don't want to uh, keep it or keep a value into that you just basically assign as null so with reference to that you have none type in python so that is a basic difference next uh, what we do is we have certain type of type conversions so why type conversions are basically used so like you have all these data types which we have seen so accordingly you have this type conversions in java if you know like you have uh, uh, the type casting so similar is the case with python you have type casting for all of the variables which you have and uh, say like uh, if you have one variable say a is equal to 10 and there is one function called as ORD okay. mm. uh, this basically does the unicode I think it should work now uh, character okay yeah so this is the ASCII character of the letter A so similarly if you have something like this you have 97 if you have something like H 104 so these are basically the unicodes or the ASCII codes so this kind of type conversions type castings are available and then you have some other uh, type casting uh, functions like dictionary tuple list and string which you have seen from here so those are also possible in python and now what we do is uh, we'll just write a code basically so so far we have not done any coding so what we'll do is uh, we will just add two numbers that is a simple programming so instead of uh, just hard coding the values hard coding means like how we have kept here like a is equal to 10 this is called as hard coding so we'll not do any kind of hard coding but instead what we'll do is we'll take input from the user how we'll take the input from the user that is very simple so what you do is uh, you have a, a method called as the input so it's as simple as that so let me define one variable that is x and i write input and in input i write enter a number next just to make sure like uh, just keep this point in your head like whenever in python uh, you do any kind of data input by default it is taken as a string so each and every objects or each and every variable each and everything which is encountered in python it is considered as objects and so it is by default taken as string so whenever now you input any number to this it will output as string so in order to check that what we basically do is we'll just uh, 
run this what happens so it is still running means it is waiting for some input from the user so let me enter as 3 so the entered number is 3 since we don't have any uh, output print statement so we are not printing it now what we do is we will check the type whether we have uh, guessed it correct or not so see now string it is string but it shouldn't be a string right it should be integer so for that we mainly use the conversion so now what we do is we write as int x now if we again type say a number 5 it is 5 so int of x now again what we do is type of x if you run this say if we have 6 it is string oh we have some problem here the number is 6 okay and then what we do here is we'll just write the type of that is x oh mm, i think we have got into some problem i don't know why it is happening uh, but internally it has converted into string so now what we do is uh, we'll better write a program for this to understand this like to add two numbers so for adding two numbers uh, we have uh, like this now okay i have not done this thing so maybe because of that it was throwing this uh, again string so now if i run this enter a number that is 5 if i check the type of x it is string okay now the converted value is in y so we should check for y now it is int okay so this kind of small things you should keep in mind so now let's move ahead so we have this uh, conversion so now you should know like uh, you have to use certain kind of conversions in uh, python programming and uh, we'll just take the another number so say we have some number like we already used y so we can't use y mm. so instead we use b and i'll just copy as it is enter the second number and again i want to do the type conversion so int of b enter a number 3 enter the second number 4 now we have not done any operation so far so what we'll do is we'll store the result in some variable say result is equal to we want to add y plus c now what we do is we'll print this or just type res we'll write 3 first number second number is 5 the result is 8 we'll just check the type of data type of the result we'll do once again and it is int so you get the result right so this is the basic idea of the uh, basically type conversions like if you want to add two numbers also you want to do this but instead if you did it hard coded like a is equal to 10 so by default internally it would have understood like it was an integer but since you are taking input from the user it is always considered as a string okay so if you remember this line it is nothing but y is equal to mx plus c 
so something like this kind of uh, regression part we will be doing so for that we'll be using this kind of small techniques so this are but simple but will not be taking the input from the user instead will be taking from all the values from a data file or data set so uh, this was just a brush up of the basic idea of what the type conversion looks now what we'll do is we'll just write one more code uh, just a small code just to uh, make sure like uh, we have this keywords into place so now what we'll do is we'll calculate the factorial of some number so factorial you know like it is n into n factor n uh, n into n minus 1 factorial so the number and the next number factorial so it just reduces to 1 so if it is 5 factorial it will be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so you need not write all those things it will be simplified by python by the math library so you have a library called as math so what we'll be doing is from math this is the library and import star so we have this uh, math library and from this math library we are importing all the methods so that is characterized by this star asterisk so similarly what we'll be doing is uh, we want to print the factorial so for factorial we have a method called as factorial so what we'll do is we just take this same line here and we want to do the type casting as well so copy pasting is not a good practice in programming but if you want to save time you have to do it no other option so uh, now we'll just make sure that which is the number entered so the entered number is so if you remember like in uh, c or java if you want to separate or if you want to print the value along with the uh, string uh, in c you have this percent d percent c percent s for string character and all other different data types so you want to like uh, make sure like you want to write all those addresses like to which data type you are referring or in java you simply have this plus which is uh, used to represent the value or print the value but in python you simply have to write a comma and write y like this so let us do say like we just take 5 the enter number is 5 so the enter number as it is here and the value y which you have inputted now let's move forward we'll just cancel this now we want to compute the factorial so for factorial what we have is we'll take a variable that is fact we have a method that is a built-in function method you can see factorial factorial of y whatever input you have taken y and you just print it so factorial of now you want to print the value so just comma and the value and then again i want to print is and the factorial value and that goes into fact it comes from here this fact so it is simple now we'll just run this uh, there is some error here okay so that is caused by or instead factorial is
yeah so we have 5 factorial is 120 so we'll run it again say like we want to calculate the factorial of 4 factorial is 4 is 24 so similarly you do uh, if you want to do an exercise for like calculate the area of a circle you can do that so in that you have a predefined variable that is pi pi that is 3.14 or 22 by 7 which uh, ever fractional value it has you can use that in order to calculate the area of a circle so you can check that activity so well that was all regarding the conventions and some of the uh, methods uh, and some of the data types which are there in python so hope you guys enjoyed this session and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing thank you very much for watching this video